I'd like to call to order this December 7th meeting of the Finance Committee of the Ascension Parish Council. Uh, Mr. Ken Dawson, if you will please lead us in the prayer and the pledge will follow. Uh, let us pray. Father, we again thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us, all the opportunities that you've given us. And even during this holiday season, Father, we pray for Amanda Barat, oh God, who lost her brother, and we pray that you minister, oh God, unto that family, one of our own. So, Father, also as we come, we ask that the situations, oh God, in this nation, oh God, the fear of terrorism that during this holiday season, that you reign peace upon the homes, upon the people of this nation and of this state. We ask for your blessings, oh God, to continue to be bestowed and let us continue to acknowledge the reason for this season. Let us put our hearts to the love that you bestow upon our world, upon this country, by the birth of your son. Let us truly remember the reason for Christmas. We give you all the blessings, and we ask for your continued blessings upon Ascension Parish. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, Madam Secretary, all members of the committee are present with the exception of Councilman Malone. There are no chair's editions, and I'll remind you that the public may speak on an agenda item. That will have, if you have uh, a comment that you would like to make, please sign in with the secretary. You'll have three minutes at the appointed time to speak. Uh, agenda item number five, the Ascension Economic Development Corporation quarterly report, represented tonight by Mr. Mike Eads and his lovely assistant. Good evening, Madam Chairman and members Good of evening. the committee us to come and give our fourth quarterly report in 2015. You have your summary activity uh, there in front of you. You see that uh, so far this year there's been uh, five projects announced in the parish, totaling uh, about uh, 754 billion million, excuse me, <laughs> uh, and about 74 new jobs. Still have a lot of activity uh, going on. Uh, as you can see from those numbers, turn on the second page, here we have three decisions pending, all of which are pretty substantial. I'd love to sit here and tell you we're going to get all of those, but I don't want to <laughs> be uh, too preemptive. But we're working on them, and that and all I think we're in good condition to receive them, uh, the factors that we can control anyway. Uh, as far as our business retention expansion, we continued our aggressive calling program on on our existing industries and companies and you see there we've uh, that has generated leads that we continue to work on uh, about nine potential expansions and another uh, 200 and some million possible uh, capital investment our site valuation and site certification we have completed that work on 10 sites to add all that up that's almost 3,000 acres i think i reported to you last time that we have more certified sites than any other parish that's beginning to pay off as with the project activity uh, as we speak. As far as our West Bank project, uh, reported to you previously, our rail and dock study has been completed and it, they are favorable. Uh, we continue to pursue uh, some other due diligence activities. We, uh, we have one prospect that's looking at it that required, not required, but we offered to do some soil boring soil uh, and so we've done that and those were uh, turned out to be uh, 
enlightening from the viewpoint that they thought the conditions on the property were worse than they were. So found out they're not quite as bad. So it's going to save them a lot of money uh, and that type of thing. And we are actively pursuing uh, purchase option <coughs> agreements uh, on the main body of the property uh, as we speak. Uh, as you probably are aware, I think you're aware, you all gave us a prescription a couple, three years ago about uh, make sure, making sure that we report certain things to you, and I'll give you a briefing of that. We have met, continued to meet with the parish president ten times this year. We've made quarterly reports to you, uh, this being the last one of the year. At the September meeting, I gave you and reviewed the financial review for 2014. Uh, we are in compliance with all state and federal requirements. We had a clean financial review, no issues there. Also in our CEA, which uh, I don't think you have a copy in front of you, uh, you specify that we're to provide training programs. Uh, in your package, you'll see uh, two flyers, one that we that took place back in August uh, on small business. We actually had four hands-on training sessions uh, for small and emerging businesses, and then tomorrow, uh, we're having a seminar for our industrial commercial brokers who work in the parish, uh, and that flyer is in there also to, uh, you know, to make sure they understand incentives and certified sites and that type of thing, so we're happy to report that. Um, that uh, concludes my report, but I would, if you would let me, like to ask three people to come forward uh, Mr. Lohr, Mr. Shake Schneider, and Bill Dawson for a presentation. Would you allow me to do that? Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Lohr, Mr. Mr. Shake Schneider, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> These uh, three gentlemen have been on our board for uh, quite a while. In fact, uh, Mr. Shake Schneider is a recycler. He went on, I think you were one of the original board members, and then he went off and then came back on, but he's been, uh, he's been on since 2011. Thank you, Kent. Right. Chris, Chris is another recycler. He was on, uh, and then he became the chairman <laughs> and got off, but he came back on. Of course. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Chris. There. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then Bill Dawson has been with us since 2010, and of course has been our chairman for the last four years. Thank all of you service and your leadership and it's made a tremendous difference in our program. That concludes my report, unless you have questions. <coughs> Gentlemen, are there any questions? Mike, I want to thank you and uh, your board under Gil's direction. I congratulate you on a very successful year. I certainly want to thank you for your effort to fulfill the obligations of your CEA to report to the parish president and to this, this body. We appreciate that very much. And I uh, thank you again for the great, great work. And bring home Pharaoh. <laughs> We're going to work on it. and. Uh, thank you all for your support. We can't do it without you when, and your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Merry you, Christmas. Sir. Merry Christmas to you. We will move along to uh, item number six. Presenting tonight on behalf of the Impact Fee Exploratory Subcommittee is Mr. Gaspar Giafici, who has been its chairman. PowerPoint's queued up. It's a little. It's a little difficult to. Um, you all have copies of this. I 
apologize to the, uh, to the audience if you can't uh, read everything on these slides because there's a lot of numbers on some of them. This will only take about 10 minutes uh, plus whatever time you have you uh, take for questions. Um, just a quick overview, what are impact fees? Um, the, um, then um, the, the overview is what are impact fees? The st we'll talk about the study performed by Duncan and Associates back in 2005-06. The direction given to us as the impact fee exploratory subcommittee, uh, the research and findings of the subcommittee, the potential uh, fee schedule and categories, recommended impact fee zone area map, and then details of the draft ordinance, the ordinance that was dra drafted in 2007. So first, what are impact fees? There, um, you all have, are pretty familiar with this. There, uh, sorry, I skipped on. Um, there are one-time charges levied against new development only with, within specific geographical areas, and that map will show those five areas that the committee um, recommends in order to generate revenue for new or expanded capital improvements that are necessitated by the new development. Um, the premise of this is that new development should pay for the cost of providing uh, the facilities and infrastructure required to accommodate growth within a defined geographical area. So what impact fees are not a tax uh, they're not to be used for operating costs. They're not to be used to fix existing deficiencies. Um, there are lots of types of impact fees. Um, and lots of communities, and I'll talk about this in a minute, lots of communities have more than one type of impact fee. Almost every community that has any impact fees at all has an impact fee for transportation. It's the most popular, I guess you can say, it's the most common impact fee that there is. But, but many communities that have transportation impact fees also have impact fees for other things, uh, like sewer, stormwater, uh, fire, uh, et cetera, all those things listed on there and possibly even others. Impact fees, um, how prevalent are they? Um, Sixty percent of all cities with populations over 25,000 have some form of impact fees. At least 34 states currently use impact fees. St. Tammany Parish has impact fees for drainage and for traffic since 2005, and by 2013 it collected about $7.5 million uh, for transportation and about $7.3 million for drainage. Impact fees should uh, be reviewed at least once every five years and may be raised, reduced, or even eliminated. And they, they have been eliminated in communities where they felt impact fees were no longer necessary for, for, to meet their needs. Uh, next, the study performed by Duncan and Associates. In 2005, um, an impact fee feasibility study was d done by Duncan, uh, an Austin firm, and they recommended starting with transportation. The 2005-06 transportation impact fee study made specific recommendations for the collection of impact fees for transportation. They, uh, the, the trigger event that was suggested was going to be the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. We'll see later that the, the actual draft ordinance uh, has the trigger event as, a, uh, as the building permit. So we can talk about the difference in those two or what makes more sense. Also, implementation was to be staggered uh, Duncan's recommenda recommendations were that filings of building permits were to be exempted for the first six months and that only 75 percent of the scheduled value of impact fees were to be collected the first year. Next, the, what direction were we given as a subcommittee, uh, impact fee exploratory subcommittee? Well, in, um, we were appointed uh, sometime in, in early 2014. Uh, we had our first meeting in April of 2014. In May, we, uh, Charles Landry uh, came and made a presentation on impact fees. I think you probably all have seen that presentation. And we adopted a mission statement at that time for the committee. Um, in uh, August of 2014, we were directed by the council to develop a scope of work and solicit a price from Duncan and Associates to update their previous study and to review um, the 2006 draft ordinance. Well, um, negotiations with Duncan and Associates were unsuccessful. They, they wanted uh, too much money. They were it was kind of difficult to deal with them and trying to get this to go forward. 
Um, in talking with, uh, with Tommy uh, uh, and, the, and the administration, we decided uh, that the subcommittee would itself update the original study with available parish resources and then make recommendations to the finance committee, and that's the direction uh, we took. This is a, a lengthy and difficult to read <laughs> mission statement, but primarily we were asked, the, the, uh, the committee was asked to analyze the financial impact of providing new or expanded capital improvements that are necess uh, necessitated by future development in the parish. The primary goal was to make recommendations to you, this committee. Um, and we were also um, given a secondary goal to explore the justification of impo imposing impact fees for various other purposes, but we did not get that far. We didn't go beyond transportation impact fees. We discussed the fact that a lot of other communities have impact fees for other things, but we stuck with transportation. <coughs> That's the only one that th this report will address. Um, so the research and findings of the subcommittee. The um, 2006 draft ordinance <coughs> needs only minor updates and revisions for the, for this uh, uh, for the parish to to adopt that ordinance and to and to begin uh, the concept of, of impact fees for transportation. Uh, five impact fee zones were recommended by the subcommittee. You have that map in front of you. Those are the five zones. Uh, there's a, a map further on in here, but you'll see that um, uh, the zones are, uh, the parish is, well, the West Bank is, is a separate zone. The parish is split by, uh, the East Bank of the parish is split by Ireland Highway, and then to the north by Highway uh, 431, and on the, the west side by uh, Highway 74. Those are the splits in the five zones. Um, we also found that <coughs> building permits for most land use categories, including residential, remains steady since 2006. Um, th and this is the significant part of this discussion. Fees that would have been collected parish-wide since 2006 using Duncan's um, suggested fee structure at that time. There have been about 7,500 homes uh, that would have brought in an average of about $1,856. Uh, I'll show you how that average comes about and where that number of 7,500 comes from. That would have generated almost $14 million in fees since 2006. Um, other land use categories, those are, those are um, in the industrial and, and and others, a uh, business and, and, and so forth, uh, a conservative estimate of about $4 million would have been generated. So you see the, the bulk of the uh, monies collected on impact fees for transportation or, or residential. Uh, the next uh, slide uh, is difficult to read on this screen, but you can see that this is a report uh, from provided by staff for build, it's a building permit summary report for residential only. Um, and the red numbers uh, on the, in 2015 for November and December, I filled in. I just copied the, the ones from uh, the previous year because those numbers weren't yet available. I thought that would be reasonable. And I also, in, in totaling the numbers up on the bottom right, I only used half of 2006. 2006 was a very unusual year. As you know, um, there were 1,706 building permits issued, uh, residential permits issued that year. So I took only half of that number and came out with 7,510 uh, homes in the last, uh, from 2006 through 2015, estimated. The next slide is building permit summary report for other uses, warehouses, um, educational uses, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. You can see them listed down the left side, and, uh, and you can see them listed from 2006 through 2015. And you can notice that uh, there's a fairly steady, um, uh, sum, uh, at the bottom where you see the total for the year is a fairly steady number. And we're not, 2015 has 180 and we're not quite done with 2015 yet. This probably only goes through October or into October. So the, this is where the summary comes from. And I'll, I'll show you uh, in a couple of slides uh, the significance of that. Next, we uh, looking at the potential fee schedule and categories. This slide is what Duncan recommended um, back in 2000 in its report, and it was the slide represented in the ordinate draft ordinance that was drafted in 2007. You see the single single family detached uh, average uh, net cost per unit 
was uh, $1,856, but you see it varies by, from, uh, based upon the size of the home from 1,000 square feet to over 4,000 square feet. Then there are the other categories, multi multifamily, mobile home, mo hotels and motels, then re retail, commercial, office, institutional, and industrial. Um, now, uh, the next slide, I, I don't want this to be misrepresented. The only thing the committee has recommended, there's two things the committee has recommended. Uh, they recommended the, fi the five zones that you see on the map before you, and they, they recommended that not charging churches or private schools. Um, public schools and all public facilities are already exempt. This committee uh, moved and, and voted uh, to also exempt uh, churches and private schools, which is something that Duncan had, had generated a number for and suggested that in, in, in most communities uh, there are impact fees on those uh, facilities also. That number on the right, though, was not recommended by the committee. These are my numbers. These are the numbers that I believe Duncan, based upon a 2012 report, national report that Duncan did, the numbers I believe that would be close to what Duncan would have recommended in 2012, let's say, uh, maybe a little bit lower than would be recommended today. However, you, and you can see the difference between Duncan's original numbers and the numbers on the right. The committee did not come to a consensus on uh, what, fees, what fees we should, we should present to you. Uh, some wanted higher fees than the ones on the right, and some wanted lower fees than Duncan's original 2006 uh, fees. So let it be clear that we did not, we're not making a solid recommendation on the fee structure. Uh, and that is, that is ultimately up to um, the Finance Committee and the Council, I think. But the point I wanted to make about this was that the, the column on the right uh, represents what I believe, based upon the, the research I've done and a, a, an updated 2012 national survey that Duncan did, what I believe would be recommended uh, to replace those numbers that, that Duncan produced in 2006. Um, the, the, uh, I should mention this also, the, the residential numbers are about 40% higher than the 2006 numbers. The, the retail commercial are about 24% higher, the office institutional about 8% higher, and the industrial only about 11% higher. So the, the bottom part, the office institutional and industrial are not nearly as, uh, as um, aggressively increased uh, as the residential and the retail commercial. Now, if you go to the next uh, page, uh, this is where I generated the numbers I mentioned before, the, the, uh, the 14, almost $14 million in residential and about $4 million in, other, in the other categories. Um, what I did was take uh, the actual numbers uh, generated, given, given to me by the staff, uh, I had to, I did have to estimate in some cases, on the bottom especially, uh, how many facilities there were, how many square feet there were, but I came out with what I thought what a, was a conservative number. So um, I'm able to say with some confidence that uh, we would have generated uh, close to $18 million in the last, uh, since 2006, had uh, the, the uh, council adopted impact fees at that time. Again, these are not... Um, the numbers uh, now that I'm, that I'm suggesting in the second column are mine. They're not a recommendation of the committee. Um, the recommend, recommended impact fee zone area map you have in front of you, this is it on the screen. Uh, we decided to, to make the West Bank a separate zone. Originally, Duncan had recommended three zones. Uh, primarily, um, uh, A and B would, would be a, one of the would have been one of the zones, and then the other areas broken into two. But but the committee uh, looked at it, decided that uh, this made the most sense. The point about the zones uh, is that uh, fees impact fees collected within the zone are escrowed into an account to be used within that zone. That zone. However, uh, should there be improvements along the border, in other words, along 431 or 74. State highways, are, uh, cannot, you can use these fees for, for improvements on state highways. Um, that, then those uh, fees can be shared between the zones. So uh, that, uh, Duncan did not separate these in the same way. They, they I think he used interstate actually as one uh, separation and, then, and, made, and, and did not go along 
major roads like like this committee did but we think this made sense so uh, we're happy to, to recommend this uh, something else that w I want to just go over very quickly is the, are the some of the details of the draft ordinance to, just to remind you of this or to to make this uh, make you aware of these things um, all public buildings including schools are exempt this committee recommended um, also exempting public, private schools, rather, and, uh, and churches. A needs assessment has to be performed to distinguish existing needs from new ones. The significance of that is that the impact fees cannot be used to fix current problems. If you have, for instance, a, a D intersection uh, and a development would make that intersection fail, the, the only thing impact fees from that development can be used for is to get that intersection down back up to a D. Uh, the council would have to come up with other monies to improve that intersection beyond that. If you get that, that's a simplification, but that's the point. You can't go back and fix problems we've already got. Uh, we can only go forward with new development, new uh, fees that are collected for improvements that are uh, that are made made necessary by the impact of the new development. An impact fee administrator must be appointed by the council. That is a, that is a, quite a responsible person and position uh, and, and perhaps staff that, of course, salary would be paid uh, by the impact fees uh, that are collected for that, and, and there's quite a lot of responsibility for that position. <coughs> impact fees are adjusted annually based upon changes to the CPI. This is typically done in, in communities that have impact fees. There is an alternative fee calculation for land uses that are not listed. Not everything on that table that you saw was listed, and if something is listed but someone uh, someone contests the fee that that uh, is proposed to be charged to them. They can uh, they can uh, ask to have the use the alternative fee calculation. They have to pay for that to be done by a, by a firm that that would have to uh, that would have to produce that information. But they can do that. Um, I, we thought uh, we thought briefly about taking that out uh, because it, it it seems to complicate things. I'm not sure it would be used a lot. But wherever there is no clear category uh, for a business that's spelled out in there, uh, we'd have to go to the alternative fee calculation to come up with what the fee would be. Uh, the collection of impact fees is triggered either by the issuance of a building permit or by a certificate of occupancy. That is something that has to be determined or decided. Personally, I think a building permit makes more sense because traffic, construction traffic is generated uh, when when the building permit is issued and you start building that. So you're starting to get an impact from the facility by the issuance of the building permit. A lot of people think, well, let's not let's wait till you get occupancy. That's when the people who either own the business or, or own the home would start generating traffic. But actually, when you get the building permit, you're generating construction traffic. So there's, it makes sense to, to think about it that way, too. Developers can get uh, credit for major roadway system improvements. Developer uh, is imposed with, a, with an impact fee for the development, uh, but, but elects to make uh, an intersection improvement uh, that, would, uh, that would improve the traffic flow in that area. The developer can get credit for that uh, and, and should get credit for that. Uh, fees collected are placed in separate uh, trust funds for each impact zone. Uh, fees uh, may be spent on state highways in addition to parish roads within each zone. The obligation to pay the fee runs with the land. Actually, the, the ordinance reads that anyone in the, in the timeline can, can pay the impact fee. It doesn't have to be paid by a, an individual, by the home buyer or by the developer <coughs> or by the landowner. It can be paid by anyone. Uh, in that in that timeline, um, family partitions in in this uh, scenario get a break on the fees. Uh, I neglected to add to to leave family partitions in the list, but family partitions, uh, the committee uh, felt, and I won't. I, I'm not sure I want to speak for the entire committee, but I believe our the consensus was that why would sh why would we give family partitions a break if there is a new home uh, developed by through the process of family partition, that's a home just like any other home, and they should pay the same amount as anyone else. That was our, that was I think the consensus of the committee there. Uh, but the the way the ordinance is read right is written right now, family partitions uh, get a break on the fees, 
And uh, importantly, fees not spent within 10 years of collecting must be uh, refunded. So uh, it's very, the, the ordinance is very clear with respect to how the fees can be used, what fees can be collected, uh, and, and, uh, and if the fees are not used, they've got to be properly used. If they're not used, they have to be refunded. So that is a very quick <laughs> uh, summary of, of this committee uh, findings. Uh, again, uh, not everything that I presented to you is re was recommended by the committee, but, uh, but some were like the, uh, the map itself. So we're open to questions. I want to thank the committee members, some of whom are here. I know Billy is here and Linda Evans, Ken Furman are here. I'm not sure if anybody else came in. Uh, and uh, they, they uh, we had some very interesting meetings. Not at, we're, we're not in agreement on every anything as or on everything as you might imagine, but but everyone's input was very valuable. I learned a lot um, about this in the in the process of, of uh, chairing this committee. So we're open for questions, and I think any of the committee members, I think uh, some of, uh, maybe Linda and uh, Billy want to speak about I this. I have a comment uh, card from Billy, and I'll call on him. Okay. If so if you have questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. When you say, Gasper, that family partitions get a break, elaborate on that for me. Yeah, please. family part, uh, the, you saw on the table that each home based on 1,000 square feet, the, the impact fee was based upon 1,000 square feet. Uh, family partitions, it was, it was written in the ordinance that family partitions would pay a flat fee of $500. Didn't quite, and I don't know where that came from. I would think, and I think the committee agreed that uh, there's no, that doesn't make any sense. If, if someone uh, builds a home through the process of a family partition, they're generating traffic in that area, in that zone. Uh, if they build a 3,000 square foot home, their, their fee should be, should be charged based upon uh, that, uh, the square footage like every other home built in the, uh, in the parish. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll be taking be questions at this time. I'll start on the far end with Mr. Uh, Lott, yeah, guess, Mr. Uh, Councilman Lambert. And you, you commented on about it, you know, where, you know, uh, you can't use it on any new or uh, old existing issues. Like we know Highway 431 has got issues. Right. We know n we need a turn lane at every intersection of 431, mm -hmm. 44. You know, we know we need extra lanes on a lot of highways. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, and looking at maybe District E, which is some of what I represent, uh, not a lot of subdivisions, a lot of rural area. Right. Uh, and uh, even if the individuals, you know, family just build single homes mm -hmm. and pay this impact fee, where, I know it's turn lanes, but we know we need them now. And if we can't use this money for that now, mm -hmm. we know we have issues throughout the parish. I guess how do we say how much money what, what what are we going to spend it on yeah as i mentioned earlier one because we can we can work with the subdivision as far as getting turn lanes now we're doing that now if you know if it the impact of the transportation impact says so you know and yeah yeah that's easier to, to look at subdivisions yeah. certainly are where most of the money would probably be generated anyway and it's easier to take a look at that because a subdivision will have as the as it builds out will have a probably a, a very easy to understand impact on an intersection, for instance. As I said, if, if that's why a needs assessment has to be done now. You have, we have to understand the condition of every road, intersection, et cetera, in the parish to be able to do this because Correct. we can't, by law, you can't go in and fix a problem that was that was developed that was that existed prior to the new development. Yeah. When a new development comes in, as I said, if, if there's a D intersection <coughs> near that development and it create and it causes it to, to become an F in, in very simple terms, you can use the impact fee monies to bring that back to a D. You'd have to have find other monies to improve it beyond that point. That's correct. So it's it's not a simple thing. I, you know, I, I think I know uh, Charles. I, I was here when Charles brought it to us. You know, years ago. Right. Right. And he stated that pretty heavily, and, and that, that turned a lot of heads. You know, you can only use it for certain. Yeah, and here's the thing. I, as I said, and it's important to understand, in your area where there might not be major developments or, and, and difficulty in figuring out, well, how can you use these? these. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be used in an area where, where you paid for it. You may never even... You might, if it's direction. within that area, you, you, you might not. But here's the thing. You've got to demonstrate that the increase in population 
in a general area has some impact on a road or something yeah. that's quantifiable. If, if it's not, you have to, in 10 years, you have to give them the money back. Yeah. You know, if you can't, if you can't figure out, if you can't figure out some way to. And I, and I guess one of the big things too, as far as a single family home, uh, mm -hmm. you got a fam you got a family and you got kids with you and you got enough land to give them a piece of land. Mm -hmm. Well, they already have a vehicle. They already at your house. They gonna move on on the side of you. You're not impacting because it's the same amount of vehicles hitting the road. Because, you know, they well, that might it. that might have been uh, the thought when uh, when the ordinance was drafted. Uh, I'm not sure that I, you know. I, sitting on planning and zoning, we see yeah. uh, we see family partitions every month without fail, and uh, I'm not sure that that's the case. I know that that does happen occasionally, but I'm not sure that's the case every time. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Todd. Councilman Lohr. I, I don't have uh, questions. I have some comments, but do you need, are you going to do the comment card first? Uh, I'd be happy to, but I want to run through questions okay, first, sure. if I may, um, so that Gasper can have a seat, and then no, he will bring up another speaker. No questions. Uh, uh, Councilman Tua? Yes. Uh, back to using on present problems, okay, or, or problems that we have. I would like to see some more definition because I may have an intersection. I represent a, a, a large portion of Highway 431, okay? And I may have an intersection that has, it might be a C right now. Right. Understand? Mm -hmm. and, and developments, we've had, just had, we have some subdivisions coming our way. Got one that was just approved, you know, within the last month. And, uh, you know, it had the ability, should the guy want to put in as many houses as he want, originally wanted to put in, he was going to have to do a, do a turn lane. Mm -hmm. So the impact would have been on him at that point. Right. And that's what you were talking about earlier. Correct. So are we confined? Uh, Todd was around whenever it was first mm -hmm. introduced, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure on the family petition that he, you know, he might have seen some of the earlier conversations. But so we are confined to traffic problems to improve within that district. Correct. That we, we've got a, you know, is it parish road improvements? Or is it traffic impact improvement? Well, there's there's the thing. The, the, the administrator and, with, and staff will have to determine whether or not uh, the money can be used for a certain improvement. And it has to be with the understanding that there's there exists the roads are in, a, in some existing condition uh, to able to handle a certain amount of traffic. I envision that a lot of the improvements, uh, say related to a subdivision, would be right at the subdivision. It might be turning lanes or uh, inside, inside or just uh, into the subdivision, a, a deceleration lane or acceleration lane outside of the subdivision right. that would not ordinarily be uh, something that we could, in planning and zoning, for instance, require the, the developer to do. It might be it might be a prudent thing to do. It might be necessary to do, but that's something that impact fees could be used for. That. That's what I, that's what I wanted to kind of bring out partially for the developers and the real estate folks is that right. we may be looking at that that argument going away in the future. That if impact fees replace that particular. Well, let's say that um, you know we're looking at a development on. Uh, I, mean, I better not mention a, a specific yeah. one. No specific. But let's say that a, that a. Um, that it's determined that the only thing that would so that would solve this this problem would be a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not going to generate enough fees for for that, and there's no way to to, to justify that around that a development or impact fees should should all be used for a roundabout. But however, some portion of those impact fees could be used based upon the impact that 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 new developments have caused to increase traffic. There might be <coughs> say three developments in an area that all use the same intersection. And that intersection from those three developments ha has gone from a from an A to a C. Well, uh, and, and maybe, you know, if a roundabout is the solution, then then impact fees can be used to do that. It might not be enough money generated to, to do it. But again, it's it's complicated. It is complicated, admittedly. And the the, uh, the administrator and the staff has to figure out has to figure out how to how to administer this so that it meets the letter of the law. Well, I guess you know, just back to the basics. Thank you, thank you guys for working hard sure. for all this time. 
and that you know we're going to have to take a closer look at it. It works for other parishes. It so does. some of these questions we're asking have been answered ten times over. <laughs> we just we just hadn't got to the questions yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know if we you know we we looking at this because you know I know that you sit in front in, on planning and zoning. You sit in front of these uh, developments coming in front of you, things like that. And we constantly asking things out of developer. Um, you know, there, there's an old cliche that whatever, you know, whatever the developer, whatever you impose upon the developer, he passes it on to the... To it's the, not a cliche, to, to it's, the, a, it's a fact. To the person buying a lot, right. you know. And uh, so, you know, it, that's where some of this lies in that if we, you know, we don't want any new road, new taxes or roads right. or for traffic improvements, we've got to find some kind of way here. Yeah, and understand, as I know you know, that this is not a solution to all our transportation problems. I want to make that clear. This this is just uh, something that we, I think, personally can help in other areas, and it does help in other areas. It's certainly not a, not a full-blown solution. And we do have the option to help with, say, a state road, mm -hmm. intersection improvement or something, if, if it's uh, within If you can difference. quantify the impact from the, de from the development in the area, if you can quantify it that way, and, and at least a portion of the Im impact fees right. can be used to pay a portion <coughs> of the improvement. Thanks, sir. That's all. No. Councilman Johnson. Yeah, for you, you talk about the roads and the conditions of the roads. Most of the roads we have in the parish are classified as Ds or Fs already. Correct. So with that being the case, if we had a road that was a, a single road, uh, very narrow. We had a, a development or multiple developments around it. Could that use to be? Could that money be used to make that road safer, wider, two-lane road to where you could actually, you know, right now I think we got some roads out there 18, 19 feet wide, and without the traffic on it, they're relatively safe. But once you start putting development around developments around and they start using that road. Would that be a justification for using the money to widen that road, not four lane, but just widen it up to make it to where it's well, meets current standards today? I guess would be a, a well. Way you to put can't it. again. You can't if you got a, a, an F road or a D road. Let's say you can't use the impact fees from developments in the area to improve it beyond beyond that. You can only you can only use the fees uh, f to to um, improve it for that incremental traffic that's been that's been put on the road so it, like I said it's it's not easy it's not an easy thing to, to easy concept right uh, it's not I don't think it's re re very easy to quantify either it's, it's done it's done in other areas it's just not simple uh, the I the idea being um, well you you get you get the idea if you yeah. I, I, I don't know whether there are other kinds of examples to use uh, I think you the answer the basic answer is yes. You can use those fees to do something to that road, but then the Absolutely. question becomes: well, how how much can you improve it because it was already a problem? So, and I, and I guess part of the other thing, looking at some of these districts and and kind of like t what Ty was talking about to uh, earlier, mm -hmm. is is there any flexibility with the ten year time frame? Because I mean, if you run into a, one of these areas that's not necessarily having a lot of development in it, you get one developer there to put some money, or a couple of developments to put some money into it, but it's not enough to do any kind of a project. It's just a, uh, it's not a, it's not a law. That's just the uh, what's in the ordinance now, and it's probably something uh, common. It's probably common to to other areas, but I think the time frame is is up to the council. Okay. Gasper. Right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Could, so I just want to be clear that, um, or be, have it clarified for me. These funds can be commingled with parish funds. They, they don't yeah, have just, to be just used. the amount of funds. Well, yeah, they're they're not going to solve the problem, as right. I said. But the amount of funds that are used, the amount of impact fee fee funds that are used, can only be that amount of funds that represent the incremental problem caused by the new development. Right. I don't, that's the only way to say it, I guess. Yeah, gotcha. But it, but then you can, you, of course, use other parish funds mm -hmm. if you were doing an improvement. So so impact fees can contribute to the solution, yeah, as but an only offset, to the, so to speak, for some. Only of the to the effect that they offset the the uh, incremental problem caused by the development. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Councilman Lambert. I just appreciate all your time and effort on it. So yeah, and I'll just. 
information. Mm -hmm. Councilman Satterer. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, um, Gaspa. Um, I have two areas that I'd like to explore. Um, first of all, um, I'm just going to state, I, I just find it sort of troublesome that your committee, Gaspa, could not get a consensus on a potential impact fee schedule. I'm sure you Well, I think it would have taken one more meeting, but I can tell you that we were not all in agreement. Okay. But I think uh, given one more meeting, we probably would have made a, made well, a specific uh, it, recommendation. It's particularly, I guess, bothersome to, uh, troublesome to me when you the statement you made is that some actually even wanted lower numbers than 2006. Correct. I want to be sure I, I captured That's that correct. correctly. Correct. It would almost suggest that maybe they don't want to have the impact fees at all, and I guess there was probably a nucleus, correct me if I'm wrong, I sir, of your committee that maybe didn't support I can't it. speak to that. I can say that everybody in the committee was very cooperative and, and helpful. No, no, I'm not saying they weren't cooperative. I'm saying yeah. just by their opinion, maybe some people thought we shouldn't have them on well, this committee. I, well, uh, there's, I'm sure there are people in the room today who feel like right, we well, shouldn't There may be council members, too. <laughs> so. Council members, yeah, too. But <laughs> where I'm headed with this is this. Okay, right. we'll cut to the chase now. Um, so now you come up with numbers, and you've told this committee several times these are not the committee's numbers because they couldn't. They're not, and, they're not a recommendation. And then you subject. further pointed out, and I want to repeat it for the record, that um, the numbers you came out with compared to Duncan's, and I think that's a good start, were 40 percent higher. Let's see if I get this. For right. residential. For residents, um, 20, was it 24 percent for retail? Correct. Uh, 8 percent for office space which, by the way, everyone needs to bear in mind, that's where churches and schools will go, correct? Well, if, you, if you keep churches and schools Second question, in, right. a minute. And then, uh, last but not least, 8% for um, uh, industrial. Correct. Okay. Just taking the two polar ends, 40% and 8%, so that's a five-fold I think difference. it was actually 11% for industrial, 8%. Well, I mean, but for, but, but for you had an 8% category. I'm just saying taking yeah, the pull ends uh, in, the, in the various percentage that you felt right. they should be massaged upward, that's a five-fold increase. Mm -hmm. I, it, well, it wasn't, that, that wasn't arbitrary. That, that was based upon uh, – Duncan did a 2012 national survey. Okay. They, they based the numbers they gave us in 2006 on a similar survey they did in 2000, I want to say in 2002. So you based your numbers on the 2012? I based their numbers – the numbers I, that I presented in that other column – uh, I based on their 2012 national survey. With maybe a little CPI on top of that, too? No. No? Just no, the, the, just the 2012 I numbers. didn't adjust anything from 2012. So even your numbers could maybe, if, Probably if we would have paid Duncan and we didn't, um, might be conservative. Yeah, and uh, this, uh, this should be mentioned also. Uh, the fees that are collected in Louisiana are generally lower than almost the all of the rest of the country with respect to transportation fees. So these, the numbers Duncan suggested and the numbers that I believe uh, would approximate what Duncan would suggest today uh, are probably more in line with the national average. Um, but the, the fees that are actually collected in Louisiana for transportation impact fees are, are generally lower than the national average. And in, in the numbers that you have um, in these categories, say just comparing to um, – that you mentioned Louisiana compared to the nation, adjoining adjacent pa parishes like East Baton Rouge and Newville and so forth, are, are your numbers below, above those? No, the, the numbers that are in the column that I, I would suggest Duncan would propose today are higher. Or higher? Yes. For, for our parish? For St. Tammany, uh, higher than St. Tammany and Baton Rouge. And Baton our Rouge. parish would be higher, yes. Okay. And my second question then is, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, you must have, on the other hand, have had a vote of the committee to exclude the schools and churches. Yes, we did. Um, be because it, in your table on potential fee schedule with the blue arrows, it shows the two zero numbers, but then reflected in the bullet statements and the details of the draft ordinance, if I understood that correctly, I may have this wrong, you're referring to the 2006 ordinance then of Duncan in that latter table, right? Uh, because in there it says that... Um, all public buildings, including schools, are exempt, but yet in the potential fee table, schools and churches does have a Duncan number. Yeah, but there, there was a private schools and churches. All public buildings, in the current ordinance, all public buildings, including public schools, 
and public buildings are exempt. That's in the current draft ordinance. Mm -hmm. What this committee uh, voted uh, on was to was to remove private schools and churches from the list you, to make you, them exempt. Do you personally support that decision? No. You said let well, the because it's you not. Said no. It's not. I, I don't you, support it. It's not. Please tell us why. It's not uh, really consistent with uh, how impact fees are collected nationwide. And even in Louisiana. I uh, can't say that, but I think even in Louisiana. How about adjacent parishes? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. So you, you, you don't know if, if schools... I don't know if, school, if private schools are exempt. I don't think they are. They're not really exempt in, other, in most other parts of the country. Okay. Uh, so. But in East Baton Rouge, public schools would be paying... No, no, no public yeah. schools. All public schools are exempt. In Baton Rouge? I think so, but public. Well, generally speaking, in in, in transportation impact fees, public buildings, including public schools, are exempt. Our ordinance is written that way. I, I didn't read the ordinance for Baton Rouge. I'm not really sure. Well, to, to be clear, it's not an ordinance. It was a suggested ordinance. Had we correct or my correct. predecessors back in 2006. A draft, a draft it. ordinance. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Sawyer. Councilman Turner. Councilman Shake Snyder. Yes, thank you. And Pastor, thank you, thank you and the committee very much. It's a lot of hard work and uh, appreciate all the effort. A couple things, uh, I think when, and Todd and I went through this years ago and uh, came very close. Uh, hopefully, small details are not gonna get away from people agreeing in principle to move forward uh, because this is something that is beneficial. Um, I think we have to be very, very, very careful when you start talking about exceptions because what we're dealing with here is the number of cars on the road. And that's, it's very simple. It's not, so if you have some type of mechanism that puts cars on the road and we're going to collect impact fees that's going to try to alleviate that. This is, it should be addressed. Um, you know, even though we feel like, you know, we'd like to help these people out of that, but it's it still comes under the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I would be uh, very reluctant, and I understand uh, Todd had his concern about family petitions, but if I decide to give my son a lot next to me and he moves and becomes an adult and builds a house, uh, whether he does it on my family petition or whether he moves into a subdivision and does it, he should pay the same thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I just think that's, that's very important and I would think that in short order, if we didn't do that, there would be a lawsuit right away uh, that would show the differences. Um, and then, and, 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 you know, I was told and I'm not sure I uh, tried to get some research in just finding out uh, schools in Baton Rouge are not collecting impact fees. And I, I, I can't schools, say I was that. Told they were per student. Is, I, I'm correct? really not sure. I, um, I would just like to find that out. Okay. Uh, the impact fee schedule in East Baton Rouge Parish shows elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and universities all have a student impact fee. Yeah. Um, and. You know, I, I know we're looking, we're looking at a lot of the traffic situations in this parish. Try to go down 73 nowadays <laughs> since Dutchtown High School, Dutchtown Middle School has been expanded and everything. It's, it's been a tremendous traffic impact. Um, uh, I think we need to be fair, but to, to be quite honest, uh, if they make an impact, we need to take a look at that impact and, and, and address that. Yeah, I can't say why that was in the uh, 2007 draft ordinance. I don't know why. Well, uh, a lot of things were compromised at that time in order to try to move it forward, and some people have strongly objected to certain things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, compromises were made in order to try to move the, the ordinance forward, just like you do always. And, you mm -hmm. know, I'm sure that there are going to be some compromises here. But uh, we need to start thinking about what causes these things. And uh, I'm not sure 
why uh, an industry that comes in that creates a lot of traffic. Uh, uh, if you have Ralph Supermarket that that has to pay a fee if they build a new supermarket and right down the way uh, 200 cars that come from Livingston Parish and go to work at an industry and they don't have to pay anything. Uh, that, that, you know, I, I, I think that's something that we need to take a look at. Uh, well, I'm not sure uh, how you can address that with impact fees, really. But, um. Well, I mean, they, they should be either by employee or by whatever, you know, whatever creates well, that I, impact. I'm not sure it would work here or fit in this situation, but there are other areas, like large municipal areas like uh, San Antonio or, or other areas that have zones with different fees per zone. Uh, there, part of their purpose is to encourage development in some areas, discourage it in other areas. Okay. I don't. We didn't think that was appropriate for for here. Okay. But um, if it's not an if it's not a big impact, and that's something right. I just just think we ought to look at it. Right. Uh, uh, I, I I shared a concern with, with with Todd on the rural areas and, and mm -hmm. Randy as we look at them, but I think what would happen uh, is a cumulative effect over time. Correct. It might take three or four years to build 100 houses, let's say, in the Santa Mo area. Correct. And those 100 houses, would, you would do the same thing you would do if a subdivision came in with 100 houses. It may, it may be at one of the intersections you put a deceleration lane or acceleration lane, uh, and maybe with help from the parish then right. you could have help. You kept, and you collect about $150,000, and yeah. you could do something And then you could do that. something. Right. Uh, I would think that one of the things that we would have the – least amount of worry about would be to improving a condition to where it would actually <laughs> improve. I can't think of anything. If we collected $17 million and put it on 73, it's not going to change it from an F to a D. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I think these small increments, if we would do that, it, it's, we're going to need help from the parish to do anything <coughs> on those things. But it gives us something to lessen the cost and try to uh, try to help out and and actually get something done and in, in the areas where they need to be done where the growth is and so I think it's important to do that and uh, I just I appreciate all the effort and sure. uh, you know there's a lot of discussions that need to be made and I just hope we keep going forward with this and and uh, people are willing to compromise because and I know some developers uh, may be against it but I would think that if we don't do something positive like this, it's going to be even more negative to new developments because people are going to fight new developments because it, it, they're just tired of these things coming in without any uh, w without any fees. And uh, kind of what and, we're and fighting now, as you know. And and I think people would be more receptive to whatever development or single families moving in if they actually paid some fees up front that we could use to uh, improve, you know, to mitigate. So uh, hopefully we'll keep on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. Councilman Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, it's been only one question. Um, most municipalities or communities have a transportation master plan. Mo many do, sure. And so that's where we know which direction we are going with roads to implement these impact fees too. So, mm -hmm. so new roads, these impacts, if you had a plan, if you was going to wire them or say 2020, so you can justify why you would use these impact fees on those certain roads mm -hmm. that you are saying, whether it's a D or F, but if it's in the master plan and you was going to improve it 10 years from now, you can still use those funds on it. Because it's in the master plan, the master plan, those t those fees would go towards those Again, if it, if, if it meets the requirements of, of definition of impact fees, yes. But since we don't have a transportation plan. Well, lacking that, you, you have to do it piecemeal, I agree. Um, if you don't have a, a master plan to, to use as a guide, uh, what, what you have to start with in order to implement this, if you were to do it, is to do a, a, sur a complete survey of where we are now. And we may have a lot of that information already. I'm not really sure. But uh, a complete survey is necessary to understand 
what our current condition is so that you know what the incremental difference is uh, from new development. So your first step would be a master plan. You could call it that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, that's what we call the transportation master plan. I mean, you could call it feasibility and whatever you want, but around here we call it a master plan. Okay. Okay. So Sorry. that's fine and dandy with transportation fee, impact fee, but if we don't know where we're going, we can't charge the community no money. I mean, that's just the way I see it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Tommy, uh, does the parish president have any comment he'd like to make? Just that we, we do have a master plan for transportation I mean, that we worked on and, and during the, when we tried to pass the tax that we put together and also we have a, a priority plan that we have to follow with the state. So we, but it doesn't matter because wherever you're going to have the impact is where you're going to have to do the improvements. So it doesn't matter in the master plan where, where you are, actually, because you won't be able to do the entire project. But anyway, I think that before you take this a step further, what I'd do is, I mean, they used to go and reinvent the wheel, just go to St. Tammany. They're similar in size to us. They, they've done all this research. They've paid the money to do it and grab their ordinance, look at it, and see what you can uh, maybe adapt to Ascension Parish or, and then also go look at Baton Rouge and pull out what they got. And uh, their neighboring parish and then St. Tammany is similar in size, and I think that would be the next step to come back uh, and get to that recommendation that, that you all looking for here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Chris, I think you said you had a comment you want to make. Let me let Gasper have a seat. I'm sure he's uh, ready to do that. And then, um, Billy, I think at this point it would probably be appropriate for you to make your, to have your three minutes of. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. Uh, my name is Billy Aguilar. I'm one of the members of the committee, subcommittee. Uh, I want to thank Gasper for all the effort that he's put into this. He's spent a lot of time organizing all the meetings. I mean, he even buys us breakfast sometimes at his own expense. Sometimes I wonder if he's on the, on the payroll of the parish that he works so much on this project. <laughs> uh, he's done a whole lot of work on it. Um, all the subcommittees is, is a very good group of people. It's a very diverse group of people. I think they're all open-minded. They're all committed to coming up with some kind of recommendation to y'all. Uh, I don't think we have a consensus on amount of impact fees I don't think we have a consensus on the ordinance yet. I think uh, Gasper said some minor changes. I think there's probably a little bit more than minor changes that need to be made to it. I think our biggest concern, the thing that we've talked about and the thing that I've talked about is that it has to be an impact fee that is fair and equitable to, to everyone, residential, commercial, and industrial, with no exemptions for anybody. Now, we, we did vote to exempt schools. I guess we felt schools uh, and, and even churches, I guess, but, but schools mainly, we didn't feel it was right for a school to pay an impact fee with tax money. It doesn't make sense to pay taxes with a tax. And they can call this a fee or whatever, but any time you pay money to a government entity, I, I consider it a tax. So uh, I, that's kind of why we exempted schools. Um, other than that, I think we are a work in progress, and I think we have a very good group of people that can come forward with some recommendations to y'all in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. I, I appreciate your time on this committee as well. And um, anybody has any questions, I'll answer any questions y'all might have. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure. Chris, you want to comment? Sure. Uh, again, thanks for all the work from the committee. Uh, it's, it's certainly very thorough. I would like to make a motion that we let the new council decide on this um, in the first quarter of next year by uh, just taking a look at all of this information, putting this in their hands, really dr diving into the fee schedule um, and, and making sure everyone's comfortable with that and where those are, uh, the zones, et cetera. So uh, with the motion being that they, um, they do that in the first quarter of next year, uh, with the intention of getting it to an ordinance uh, coming to the council. That do you do you do you propose that this, that this committee continue that work? I would propose it go to the council. I think there's been enough discussions. This has been going on long for a long time. I think the, I think the committee, everyone, you know, would uh, this committee the continue council. to work with the council? Would they do the research, or are you asking that the council begin to do its own research? 
I was asking that the committee do it with the new council and, and, okay. buy, and basically come forward to them, um, at, you know, because I think the finance committee's mm -hmm. kind of been okay. through it. So. Okay, I appreciate that. Do I have a second for that? A second. Have a second. Any questions at this time? Councilman Satterley? Yes, um, uh, just maybe if you could, Madam Chairman, repeat the motion so before we vote. I think that the motion is, and Chris, you may sure. correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, we, that the new, that the committee continue to work on the uh, creation of a table and a draft ordinance to be taken uh, to the council. It does not have to come back to finance, so it would be uh, requested at the time that they are completed with their work that it go, uh, it, that it's requested of the council chairman to add it to the agenda for discussion in the council. For discussion, yes. Yeah. First quarter of next year. In the first quarter mm -hmm. of next year, thank you. So we have a time frame. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any opposition? Hearing none, that motion passes. Jasper, thank you so much. Moving on to item number seven, a resolution to dedicate the, edit, the escrowed sales tax incentive from the CF Industries Expansion Project to infrastructure developments in the West Bank Industrial Overlay Project should CF Industries elect to take advantage of state incentive programs in lieu of the parish incentive program. And I would remind this finance committee that other projects in the parish have indeed uh, chosen to take the uh, state program as opposed to the to the parish incentive, and, and I think that is what has uh, precipitated this being added to the agenda tonight. Am I correct on that, Ms. Gwynn? Okay. Only one company uh, accepted a parish incentive program, and that was Dynamic Fuels, which was the first one before we really had a, a, a good idea about what we were doing. Yeah, sub subsequently, other projects such as C uh, all the rest. Withdrew. All the rest, okay. Yeah. So, do you can you call a couple of those right off the top of your head? Uh, BASF, uh, Methanex, uh, Westlake, and of course CF, and um, I think there may have been one more. All of them. Okay. Besides Dynamic Fuels. All right. Pretty much all of them. All right. So, thank you, O'Neill. Would you like to? Pick up from here. I was just asked to do this by the administration and Councilman Joseph to dedicate those funds to that overlay project that we've been working on. Um, the dock, the uh, rail, and the roads within, uh, there's going to be money that was collected. It's West Bank <coughs> money, and they were asked that we, that we just develop a resolution so that we can give some incentive to the landowners over there to know that we want to put up our share of the uh, the proceeds in this project. I mean, it's up to you to make that. I was just asked to present it to you. I think Councilman Joseph. Councilman Joseph. Yes, ma'am. This uh, came up uh, where we were looking for some incentive. That we know they need a road and then go from Highway 1 to 4 or 5. And uh, that was to, with e -A -C -D -E, uh, the economic development, was to uh, try to put in some incentive. This funds can stay over there for we can lower more business in that area and uh, improve the transportation because it's one way, it's just basic, one way in it by the River Road 405 and it leads out of uh, Iberville Parish. So we're looking for that incentive to at least put a road between that 17,000 acre incentive. Thank you, Councilman Joseph. Tommy? Uh, I think it'd be more for the Infrastructure there, whatever. I mean, if a if a really good prospect comes in, they may want to put the road in, and then we could utilize the, the money to to do the infrastructure, uh, whether it be the water, whether it be uh, drainage, other things there that uh, would be needed uh, for the property. And uh, but roads probably would be the, the use, but I wouldn't limit it to roads. Don't. So. Thank you. But I think it would be a, you'd get your return probably a hundred times if you do that because it will make the property a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, lucrative to, the n to, whoever, to whoever's looking at it than any of the plants and stuff. So. Mike, you are in the building. Would you like to weigh in on this? I'll make the motion that it be dedicated for infrastructure. Okay, I'll 
So, Chris, I have a motion that we dedicate to infrastructure. I have a second. Have a second. Uh, now I have questions. Councilman Kluwak. Yes, uh, Councilman Joseph. Would, uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of numbers we're talking about here. Uh, if, if we would be. About for me. Yes, uh, is there any way, you know, I know that we're constantly looking at ways to improve, you know, something like West Bank Expressway. You know what I mean? Um, we we um, look at that master plan with that. Um, that's like all in that picture of it because if that uh, expressway come, it would come, it would be right by that 17,000 acre. Right. So, I mean, the funds, like the president said, we, we're not looking at just for one specific thing, but anything that would improve and enhance that portion, that 17,000 acres to help Mike and them attract those business, we are all open for it. Although I, I agree with the parish president and with you that we're not just limited to roads because uh, if we do want to give some type of incentives like water or whatever, then that's, a, that's four million right there, mm -hmm. you know, on that piece. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Councilman Chase. Yeah, yeah I, and, and I think we all need to remember that this may be the largest single economic development project in the United States uh, coming up. This is uh, historic. Uh, this is something that can uh, benefit this parish in the next, you know, 50 years. Um, and to basically this would be seed money to offer, to be able to offer to get matching funds to do roads, water, sewer, uh, rail, whatever. Just something to be able to say that we've stepped up and, and support this in a positive manner. Um, that that money will be, um, as as Tommy said, replenished probably a hundred times over, uh, coming back with seventeen thousand acres of industrial development or commercial development there. So um, I, I think it's well worth it. It's a good. I appreciate uh, someone doing research and coming up with that as an opportunity to take monies that we really don't we weren't expecting to be able to utilize in a very positive manner. So I think it's a, a very good thing. So. Thank you. Any further comments? Yeah, I just, um, Mr. Shakes and I just uh, said that uh, who came up with the great idea is a uh, parish president came up with the great idea. So uh, just sitting around trying to negotiate with the landowners and uh, he came up with a brilliant idea with this and, they, and that's helped us move this project a whole lot quicker with that idea. Okay, so. thank, thank you, Mr. President. All right, I have a motion and a second. All comments, any, uh, any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. I, item number eight, project change order number 001 for the Donisonville Splash Park, standalone bathroom, expert maintenance and construction services, LLC, project number REC13-001-01. <coughs> to increase the contract by an additional 14 days due to a number of inclement weather days. Mr. Inlay. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, committee. This is uh, just to, just to uh, dot the I's and cross the T's. Um, Make that motion. Days. So move. A motion by Councilman jo Johnson, a second by Councilman Lambert. Uh, any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number nine, Certificate of Substantial Completion, Project Number 13-001, Donaldsonville Splash Park, Standalone Bathroom. Mike? Yes, ma'am. This is for the same project. We're just requesting to get your approval to- So uh, move. Yes, I have a motion by Councilman Joseph, a second by Councilman Johnson. Any of questions? Any objections? Uh, come on. Mr. Joseph. Yes, I just want to thank administration and everybody and uh, Mike uh, with this project, uh, we had the uh, opening last week. Uh, it was a beautiful site, and uh, I just want to thank Parish President and everybody that worked on that project. And uh, we're looking for the kids to enjoy it in the spring. Thank you. Thank you. Or at Christmas, if we, can, if we, if we can't get <laughs> some, <laughs> there, if we can't get <coughs> some cold weather. There's a playground out there too, there so you, you don't go. have to. There you go. All right. Thank you so much. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 10, 
Amendment to the, uh, pro to the professional services contract between TMB Water Services, Inc. and the Ascension Parish Government for an additional $40,000, the total contract amount not to exceed $70,000. Who will be speaking to this? Mr. Dawson. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, this is the chlorine burn that was associated with the amoeba find over on the assumption side. Uh, we had an initial contract for the St. James work, but when there was a positive sample of the amoeba, we had to immediately take action as an emergency situation. We were not given a choice. We were mandated by DHH to start that burn. So these, these increased costs. Um, so moved. Uh, so moved. A motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, a second by Councilman Shake Snyder. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 11, the monthly contracts report. Ms. Sandra? Good evening. Um, you have before you the, the one contract we entered into in the month of November. <coughs> Gentlemen, do you have any question about this contract? Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Sandra. The annual contracts report, re contract report of contracts being renewed in 2016 is item number 12. Ms. Sandra? Yes, these are um, all the contracts that are expiring on the 31st of, this, of December. Um, they're this, just the renewals that um, we have every year. Does anyone have any questions about the annual contracts? Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Sandra, so much. Thank you. Item number 13, the sales and use tax report. Ms. Gwynn. Good evening. Uh, you have before you your normal sales and use tax report. This is the uh, for the month of October collections based on the September sales. There's actually two more months of uh, collections that will be in 2015. So you can see by the budget comparison, you know, we're already in the 90s, so we expect uh, to exceed the budget projections for this year. And of course, the uh, major increases in each of the districts, well, mostly the, the two sales tax districts, one and two, is still due to the large industrial expansion on the west bank of the parish. And we hope that with uh, some coming announcements and ones that already been announced that that would have the uh, have a smoothing effect when this big construction project is completed. The charts in the back of it are what you're familiar with. I won't go over them all. Uh, and the pie chart shows that right now you can see the pe petrochemical industry was a major driver in our sales tax increases in this year. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. <coughs> Gentlemen, do we have any questions? Then we will move along to the sale to the revenue and expenditure report. Uh, in the absence of Amanda tonight, uh, we asked Dawn if she would give that report, please. Good evening. Before you are the financial reports for the month of October 2015. On page one, you can see that revenues are at 106.88%. In page two, expenditures at 103.28% at 83.3% of the year. On page three are charts that compare the year-to-date revenue and expenditures for both the operating and capital as compared to the budget. And page four and five gives you a brief explanation of the funds that are highlighted on each of those pages that are under the budget for revenues and over the budget for expenditures by 5% or more at this time point in the year. The last page reflects all checks issued in October over $100,000, and the total of these checks are $2,825,355.94. Once you review the report, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them at this time, or you can contact our office. Are there any questions, gentlemen? Hearing none, we'll move along to the bid items. Item number 15. To ex Ms. Joan, to accept the lowest responsive bid as follows. 
On November 10, 2015, the Purchasing Department received three bids for a WANCO three-line message sign with trailer and hydraulic lift. After review, the Purchasing Department and DPW recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from traffic control products and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this material. Motion. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Kluot, a second by Councilman Benny Johnson. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On November 19, 2015, the Purchasing Department received three bids for the ballpark lighting project. After review, the Ascension Parish Engineering Department and AST engineers recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from Diamond Electric Company and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this project. Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any questions? I'm sorry. Was this in the budget? How much we had in the budget for that? Yeah, I had the budget. The budget was $400,000, and it was approved by finance. Okay. Thank you. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On December 2nd, 2015, the Purchasing Department received six bids for oil and grease. After review, the Purchasing Department and Fleet Department deemed the three lowest bids non-responsive and recommends accepting the lowest responsive bid from Suncoast Resources and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this material. So moved, Madam Chairman. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert. See. Second by Councilman Benny Johnson. And I believe this, a quick question from Councilman Kluwak. <laughs> okay, so you had three three bids, non-responsive bids. Two. The, yeah. Two, two yeah. non-responsive. Uh, double check. We the, had three. The first three lowest bids were non-responsive. I met with O'Neill and we reviewed the bids and we moved to the fourth lowest bid. In other words, they, did, they didn't follow the protocol of the bid. That's correct. Exactly that's what, right. That's what I, want to, I want to make that mistake. clear to everybody, that they didn't enter their bid based on, on the request. That's correct. All right. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Let's have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Hearing no, any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On December 2nd, 2015, the Purchasing re Department received two bids for river silt. After review, the Purchasing Department and DPW deemed the lowest responsive, the lowest bid non-responsive and recommends accepting the lowest responsive bid from Ernest Martin. Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Kluot, second, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. On December 1st, 2015, the Purchasing Department received two bids for bridge material and round timber piles. After review, the Purchasing Department and Major Drainage recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from MCM Lumber Company and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this material. Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Benny Johnson. Second. Second by Councilman Chris Lohr. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. On December 1, 2015, the Purchasing Department received two bids for limestone grade 89. After review, the Purchasing Department and DPW recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from Bad Industries and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this material. Motion. Motion. A motion by Councilman Chris Lohr, second by Councilman Randy Kluot. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. On December 1st, 2015, the Purchasing Department received three bids for limestone grade 610. After review, the Purchasing Department and DPW 
recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from Bayer Industries and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this material. Motion by Councilman Benny Johnson. Second. Second by Councilman Ken Schneider. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. At this time, the chair would like to recognize the parish president. Yes, uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, congratulate the finance department for winning the award again. Uh, I think the government financial reporting award, this is their seventh straight year. And on the budget reporting, uh, it's four straight years. So I want to do that. And since this is my last finance uh, committee meeting, uh, there's a, a person here that, that's very special to me that's been around uh, since I've been around. Uh, actually, uh, it was my first CAO, Ms. Gwen LeBlanc. And uh, we've been, been through. around the first time. Yes. We, uh, We've been through a lot together and uh, had some ups and downs and quite a few arguments uh, over the years, but uh, always still loved each other. So uh, I just want to take this opportunity uh, tonight to present uh, a certain award here to Ms. Gwen LeBlanc. And uh, it says, to proclaim Monday, December 7th, 2015, as Gwen LeBlanc Day in Ascension Parish, whereas lifelong resident Gwen LeBlanc began her career of public service with Ascension Parish Government in 1973. And whereas, having graduated from Dutchtown High and Baton Rouge Business College, Gwen also completed courses in accounting at Louisiana State University, along with financial seminar course, coursework in the LSU Academy of Politics. Whereas Gwen's service to the parish began with the parish CETA administration and as an assistant to parish secretary treasurer, whereas in 1984, Gwen's career accelerated when she accepted the position of Ascension Parish Secretary Treasurer. Whereas Gwen's proven leadership, ability, and foresight prompted the parish president to seek her talents by promoting her to chief administrative officer from 1994 to 2000. Whereas Gwen answered the civic duty call again in 2000 when she, she accepted the position of chief financial officer, treasurer for Ascension Parish. And she continues to date uphold the trust and confidence of the residents of Ascension Parish. Whereas, while maintaining a distinguished career in Ascension Parish, Gwen had also served with numerous organizations, including as an Ascension Parish Sales and Use Tax Authority board member, a parochial retirement system of Louisiana board member, elected statewide, Government Finance Officers Association, state and national, Nacos County Administration Organization, Louisiana Association of Parish Administrations, Leadership Ascension's first class graduate, uh, and past member of the Alumni Board and the East Ascension Rotary Club. And whereas, with 42 years of dedicated service to the residents of Ascension Parish, Gwen has lived up to her and surpassed the parameters defined in Ascension Parish Home Rule Charter because she has performed her duties as treasurer of Ascension Parish with integrity, with integrity and honesty, and all done in a professional manner. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed, I, Tommy Martin, as president of the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereunto proclaim Monday, December 7th, 2015 at Gwen LeBlanc Day in Ascension Parish and make her an honorary parish president on this day, urging our citizens to accord her all respect and honor due to an honorary holder of this high office. Ms. LeBlanc, you can come up. every minute of it. I'll certainly miss you. <laughs> You've been a big supporter of everything I've done. And so has the council, and each council, and each police jury before you. So I've enjoyed it tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Gwen's the best politician in Central Parish, I can tell you. She's, <laughs> she's, she's survived 42 years, and uh, not many people can say that. Uh, I think she outdid heart. So, uh, but Gwen, you always done a wonderful job, and, and we appreciate it. And I just want to show you this uh, small token of appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. To, to be 
respected by the, the elected officials of the parish. All you have to do is respect them back and it, always remember they're the voice of the people they represent and also the choice. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say if, if we are indeed blessed, Miss Gwen will stay another 42 years. Yeah. That would be that would be amazing. All righty, we got everybody back together. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. That motion passes. <laughs>